Katrine, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. I have the pleasure to introduce you this morning to the way forward to, with ESCO. So, unfortunately, to, indeed, Tony couldn't make it, and I have the pleasure to replace him. Um, Yesterday, we witnessed the launch of ESCO version zero. We've had through the day a number of presentations, workshops. They gave us some, some keen ideas already on what the benefits of ESCO can be for applications, for users, other stakeholders. But there is bigger and better. We have actually started already with our stakeholders to, wor to work towards ESCO version one. This version, um, we will build up with even higher stakeholder involvement than ESCO version zero, and it will better reflect the labor market and the world of education and training. While doing so, it will have a great focus on uh, occupational and geographical mobility. Additionally, we have refined the semantic structure of uh, ESCO, to better describe the relationships between occupation skills competences, skills competences, qualifications, and qualifications and occupations. And as a last point there, we have tried to enhance the user friendliness of ESCO for the end user. So we have adapted the, the hierarchical structure of ESCO so that when users meet ESCO in an application, they can browse down through ESCO to the occupational profiles, excuse me, <coughs> through the occupational profiles in a more intuitive way than present in ESCO version zero. How are we going to do this and actually how, who is actually doing this work? Because I think that is the key question. Who will develop ESCO version one? Well, as a first important player, we have 27 sectoral reference groups. They are structured based on sectors or one or more sectors of economic activity according to NACE. They will be the ones that describe occupational profiles according to their sector. Additionally, we have the cross-sector reference group who will focus on the transversal cross-sectoral nature of the diverse sectors. How can we create synergies between sectors? What skills, competences, can be related or can be, tra uh, can be translated into many different uh, occupations throughout sectors. Martin already mentioned it yesterday. You can, um, see, trend, uh, you can see these skills, transversal skills, as, um, for example, team spirit, but also languages, IT skills, and more. We have two very special ladies that help the cross-sector reference group to develop this. Ladies, Claudia Pleimauer and Elizabeth McSkeen, can you please stand up for a second? They have actually helped the cross-sector reference group to develop this transversal classification that is already present in ESCO version zero, but has to be further refined in cooperation with the reference groups for ESCO version one. They don't do the work alone, of course. Someone has to coordinate, coordinate and supervise and make sure everything happens in a very consistent way. And that's where the role of the maintenance committee comes in. So the maintenance committee has actually focused so far mainly on the development of the ESCO guidelines. What are these ESCO guidelines? Well, they are the ESCO Bible. And they contain a methodology for the development of ESCO version one, but they also contain, and that's quite crucial, um, they will contain terminological guidelines. These guidelines will describe how terms should be formulated for ESCO and they are currently under development. They will also be included in all 25 languages. When the work of the reference groups progress, the focus of the maintenance committee will shift from the uh, ESCO guidelines towards quality assurance follow up the work and the output delivered by reference groups and ensure consistency. At the second step in this quality insurance, when they have approved the work of the reference groups, they give green light and recommend publication, recommend publication by the ESCO board. Of course, ESCO version one is quite far ahead of us. We will not wait to publish until we're there. So we will release intermediate versions, which is 
ESCO version 0 is now live, ESCO version 0 0.1 will be published approximately end of 2014. This version will most likely contain the translation into Nor uh, Norwegian, Icelandic and Croatian, but it can also already contain the work of most likely two sectoral reference groups. And next version, version 0 0.2, will be published approximately around mid-2015 and more intermediate releases will follow until we reach ESCO version 1 in 2017. If we look at the task of a reference group, we can describe it as follows. A reference group describes the labor market reality for their sector in two occupational profiles. What is an occupational profile? An occupational profile consists of what you see here on the screen. An occupation, that's the first pillar. An occupation, it's essential and optional skills competences. They can be transversal or job specific and relevant European or international qualifications. Why do I say European or international ones? Because the qualifications on national level are included via the EQF and are not directly part of ESCO. What is an additional thing you see in here is that reference groups will develop this, this second hierarchy to browse through the classification and through occupational profiles. And this will be the sectoral breakdown they deliver. So each reference group will describe its sector very structuredly, very intuitively, and this will serve as a second way to browse to ESCO, as I already said before. Developing occupational profiles for 27 reference groups, it's risky business. If we don't have a clearly described methodology, if we don't have a clearly described way to get there, we will get 27 entirely different outputs. That is why the maintenance committee has described a five-step methodology in the ESCO guidelines. I have described the five steps here and I will briefly read them out loud. So step one is the development of the sectoral breakdown and listing up of sources. Step two is development of the prototype. Then we have listing up of occupations, skills competences and occupational profiles are completed in step five. At this moment, we don't have detailed information on the five-step methodology available on the ESCO portal. We have the information displayed here, information on the business cases, the booklet, general introduction on ESCO and more. More information about the ESCO guidelines, about the five-step methodology will follow also on the portal. We currently have 11 reference groups, sectoral reference groups active. I've already displayed the first batch here. In October 2012, we had agriculture, forestry, fishery, and hospitality and tourism. They played a crucial role. They have been the co-founders, together with the maintenance committee of the five-step methodology. Based on their expertise and experience, we have then developed a five-step methodology. They've been followed by health and social service activities, wholesale, retail, rental, and leasing, um, textile, leather, apparel, footwear and more, veterinary activities and then an additional four in April this year. So far we have 11 reference groups and they re represent together about 48% of labour market reality in Europe. We have 60 more reference groups still to be established to reach ESCO version 1. I have displayed a few already here. The entire list you can find in the ESCO leaflet you received yesterday in your welcome package. So it's quite interesting to see which reference groups will still be established. Um, and if you have questions uh, for more information, please don't hesitate to contact the ESCO secretariat. And that is my last slide, Martin. <laughs> Um, I've been talking about reference groups, about maintenance committee, but how can you still get involved if you are not yet involved? Well, there is four different ways to get involved. You can provide via the ESCO portal feedback on the releases, on the ESCO guidelines. You can choose to participate in one of the already existing or new reference groups. You can choose to participate via your professional network 
to the validation, adoption of the work of reference groups. And lastly, and that can maybe come from this conference, we might set up specialist subgroups to facilitate the adoption of ESCO. So I think the crucial, crucial message I try to deliver here today for you is that if we want to develop ESCO, we need high involvement of all stakeholders, from both education and training and labor market. Only when we do that, we can well develop ESCO, get it adopted, and ensure that the benefits that have been expressed yesterday can be gained by a wide range of users. This will result in um, transparency on the labor market, more transparency, in a further alignment between education and training and the world uh, of uh, work. And then lastly, very important, it will allow us to improve occupational and geographical mobility of workers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen.